All right, hello. I am Mink. We are gonna play System Shock 2. But first, some notes. This is new to me, so the running commentary will probably suck, and I will probably be quiet for extended periods, but whatever. Second note, this will be completely blind. I've only played through to training. I haven't played anything after, so bear with me in that regard. There will probably be things, there's, there is a lot of things I don't know, but whatever. So let's just get right into it because I have nothing to say. I'm going to be playing on normal again because I have no idea. Look at you, hacker. A p p pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you ru run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? In 2072, a rogue artificial intelligence known as Shodan lost her mind. In her limitless imagination, Shodan saw herself as a goddess destined to inherit the earth. That image was snuffed out by the hacker who created her. February 3rd is the day the magic happens. The Von Braun, the first starship in history capable of traveling at faster than light speed, will undertake her maiden voyage. This incredible journey is the result of teamwork between the UNN Protectorate and the incredible scientific minds of the newly relicensed Trioptimum Corporation. Imagine being able to travel to distant star systems in a period of weeks. It's all part of Triop's commitment to the future. The Von Braun is packed with over 1.8 billion flight, scientific, and security systems, nearly all developed by Trioptimum and its wholly owned subsidiaries. Providing security for the Von Braun as she plows through the heavens will be the UNN Rickenbacker. At her helm will be no less than Captain William Bedford Diego himself, hero of the Battle of Boston Harbor during the Eastern States Police Action. This incredible union of government and corporation is made possible by an intricate series of docking mechanisms that will allow the Rickenbacker to piggyback its way into jump space. Sleek, fast, revolutionary. Who knows what wonders await our crews in the bosom of the cosmos. All we do know is that it's a great day for mankind. that video will make more sense later, but weird. Welcome to the Ramsey Center UNN Recruitment Facility. Please watch your step when leaving the train. The graph shafts at the end of the hall will take you to the street level training and recruitment center. Please proceed to the graph shafts. Step into the graph shafts to proceed to the street level recruitment. I don't know how often I'll be updating this, as my updates are sporadic at best. But... Hoping I'll finish the game, at least. Before you choose your career, you'll want to learn some basic abilities. First, you should go into the basic training center. When you're done with basic training, proceed to the advanced training area.
To pick up some basic skills you'll need to get by in the service, enter this Cyberlink booth. Inside, you'll learn the basic skills you'll need to get started. Welcome, trainee. While you're in our virtual training courses, we provide you with a simulated cyber interface. This training interface is identical to an actual military-grade cyber interface. Now, let's try it out. Move the mouse. See how it changes where you look? That means you're in shoot mode. Hit the tab key. This puts you in use mode, where you can use your mouse to interact with items in the world. Open your primary MFD, or multifunction display, by clicking on the MFD button near the bottom of the screen. This display shows your strengths in various areas. When you're ready to continue, press the tab key to go back to shoot mode. Try changing between modes until you get the hang of it. Follow the red path along the ground to the next train station. See, you know, this is funny for me because he says to hit tab to get out of this, but that does not work for me. Instead, I have to close the inventory, and that works. I don't know if that's just me, or... I... I don't know. To pick up items, center them on your screen and right-click. This will automatically place that item into your inventory. To view your inventory, press the tab key. You can move items around your inventory by left-clicking and dragging them around. To drop an item, drag it from your inventory into the 3D view and release the mouse button. Tab to get back. Yep, that worked. To use items like buttons in computers, center them in your view and click the right mouse button. All usable items will have brackets around them. Highlight the button on the pillar and right click. This will activate the lift. Try it out. If you can still see your inventory display, it means you're in use mode. Hit tab to return to shoot mode. The object before you is a med hypo. Pick it up and then press tab to go into use mode. Right clicking on the med hypo will use it and restore some needed hit points. Your hit points are displayed by a bar in the lower left corner of your screen. Many objects in your inventory can be used by right clicking on them. See the crate in front of you? To search it, center it on your screen and right click. If you are in use mode, simply move the pointer to the crate and right click. To take an item from that container, simply left click on it. This will automatically place that item in your inventory. To close the container window and return to shoot mode, press the tab key. Yep, press tab. One of the most important tools you have as a soldier is your PDA. This device stores audio logs, emails, and other useful information. Click on the disk icon near the bottom of your screen to bring up the PDA display. Currently, the contents of your PDA are empty. Now, pick up the audio log in front of you. This message is coming from the audio log you just picked up. You can use your PDA at any time to play any audio log or email you've received. In the field, the PDA is also used for keeping track of your current mission objectives and obtaining help information. Now it's time to learn about jumping and mantling. To jump, simply press the spacebar. Some surfaces can be mantled onto by holding down the spacebar. Mantling lets you pull yourself up to ledges and other high places in front of you. Give it a try. of a rudimentary system, but whatever, it works. To climb a ladder, simply walk into it and look upward. You'll automatically start climbing the ladder. Now the ladders, these are annoying. These are the types of ladders that can't get off of. I don't know if it's just something I'm missing, but I have to jump to get off of one. I don't know, I just feel that could be a lot better than it is. Maybe it's just me. 
I don't know. You've done well. Remember, if you're unclear on any aspect of what you've just learned, you can repeat the training as often as you wish. Hopefully that ladder thing won't come back to bite me later on, but... Till if then. you've completed basic training, you're ready for the advanced lessons provided here. Advanced training will familiarize you with the three key areas of military service. Weapons training, technical training, and psionics training. Approach the Cyberlink booth of your choice to train in that area. When you finish training in the three areas, proceed directly to the recruitment center to choose and start your military career. <clears throat> All right, wannabe. If you want to learn the weapon skills it takes to even think about joining the Marines, come on in. We're looking for a few good men. Hoorah. Good to have you on board. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, the UNN has kindly provided you with a virtual cyber interface and all the simulated skill levels you'll need for the training tasks. But don't get too cocky. They'll disappear once you leave the booth. Now we'll teach you how to handle a firearm. Pick up the pistol and the clip from the table. You can equip the weapon in one of two ways. Bring up your inventory and drag the pistol to your weapons equip slot near the right hand side of your inventory. If that's too slow for you, you can use the hotkeys on the keyboard. Press 2. If the pistol was in your inventory, it will equip for you automatically. To lock and load the ammo clip, hit the R key or hit the reload button on the lower <coughs> right corner of your screen. Once you've loaded the firearm, take a shot at the dummy robot by pressing your left mouse button when in shoot mode. Notice how the health bar gets shorter as you chip away. Some items need to be charged with energy before they can be used. Pick up the laser pistol. Now use the recharging station nearby. The recharge station will juice up all of your energy-based items. Weapons, batteries, you name it. Five on the keyboard. No recoil on this thing. Interesting. Weapons are not fine wines. They do not get better with age. The colored dot on the lower right corner of the screen tells you what kind of shape your firearm is in. Green is good, red is bad. To fight the effects of wear and tear, a soldier with maintenance skill can use a maintenance tool to improve the condition of his weapon. Just pick up the tool, open your inventory, and drag the tool onto your pistol. Remember that maintenance tools are only good for a single use. Good work. Now you're ready for the Marines. Take a look at the other training areas first before you enlist. They might just come in handy. Inside, we'll teach you the basics of some technical skills you'll need in the Navy. Welcome. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, We'll provide you with a temporary cyber interface and the skills you need to accomplish the training tasks. But they'll only last so long as you're in the booth. The object in front of you is a container of nanites. <coughs> nanites are consumed whenever you perform technical tasks, such as hacking or repairing. When you pick up the container of nanites, they do not go in your general inventory but are instead displayed in use mode on the bottom left of your screen. Walk over to the keypad by the door and try out hacking. Use the keypad by right-clicking on it. To the right of the number pad, you'll see an orange tab labeled Hack. Left-click on the tab. Text will appear indicating the difficulty of the hack and any bonuses that apply. Click on the Start button to begin hacking. You'll see a grid of nodes. Clicking on a node will either turn it bright or dark. To successfully hack, you must connect three bright nodes in a straight line. Beware the ice nodes with the red outlines. If one of these turns dark, you fail the hack, and you might break the item you're working on or worse. You can restart your hack attempt at any time by hitting the reset button. 
though you'll have to pay the nanite cost again. You can use nanites to buy items from replicators. To use a replicator, right-click on it. Then left-click on the item you wish to purchase. The item you purchase Please will drop into the slot below. Make sure you pick up your purchases before you leave. Hi there. Replication make your database selection. reinitialized. Choosing value wrap. Choosing value wrap. Choosing value wrap. Pointless because it's all gonna disappear. You learned the basics of the technical skills. There are several other technical skills you'll learn throughout the course of your career, such as repairing items and modifying weapons. The cyber interfaces for these tasks are similar to the hacking interface. Before you enlist in the Navy, try out the other training courses. They'll be useful. Inside, you will learn how to reach out with your mind. Do not let fear block your path. We've provided you with a virtual interface and the temporary ability to project simulated psionic powers. Once you leave this area, these powers will be lost to you. The red bar at the lower left of your screen tells you how many Psi points you have. Psi points symbolize the current ability to use your Psi powers. Psi oh hypos God. replenish your psi points. Try using a psi hypo and watch your psi points increase. When you've reached your maximum in psi points, move to the next station. <coughs> this psi amp amplifies your psi powers and lets you project them into the real world. To equip it, pick it up and then hit the tilde key. Firing the Psi Amp activates your currently selected Psi Discipline. You currently have access to two disciplines, Cryokinesis and Kinetic Redirection. Go into Use Mode and click on the arrows on the bottom right of the screen. This will cycle through your available Psi Disciplines. Later, clicking on the arrows above the number to the left will allow you to select Psi Disciplines from higher tiers. Use cryokinesis to destroy the robot, and kinetic redirection to pull that nanite container towards you. Be careful. Holding down the mouse button can augment the power, but holding it down for too long will cause burnout, which will damage you. If you run out of Psi points, use another Psi Hypo. change these whatever they're called spells because having to do that every time is somewhat annoying but whatever done with training mastery of the mind is a slow but rewarding process return to this area if you need more <clears throat> guidance before you enlist in the OSA, it would be useful to experiment in the other training courses. Now we get to choose our path, I guess. Here's where you make your choice, soldier. Here's where you enlist in one of the three branches of the military. Once you decide on your branch of service, there's no going back. A shuttle will take you to a UNN orbital space station, where you'll receive a briefing regarding your yearly postings. Good luck. I don't know if this choice actually has a huge impact or not. Or if any of them can learn skills from the other. But since they have access to hacking, I'm going with the Navy.
Welcome aboard the space station Chesapeake Bay, sailor. It looks like you've picked up some standard weapon skills at basic on Coronado Island. Now it's time for your tour of duty. Your tour will consist of four postings over four years. In this man's navy, you're given a choice of three different postings a year. It's up to you to decide what kind of career you want to have, so choose wisely. Just approach a shuttle bay to receive a briefing on a posting. If you think that posting is right for you, head into that bay to accept the assignment. How can you be a sailor when you're on a space station? I don't know. And I don't know if these upcoming choices have any Im a huge impact either. I'm hoping not. Because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna pick terrible ones to start with, but whatever. The UNN Lucille is looking for volunteers for their military police detachment. Those sailors can get pretty rowdy on these year-long cruises, so you better not be afraid of a tussle. Modify and strength. Not sure. The UNN Lucille is looking for an engineer's mate to help maintain the ship's core energy systems. There's some heavy lifting involved, sailor. But you'll learn your way around the high-tech equipment. Repair and strength. Again, not sure. The UNN Lucille is looking for an ops training officer to learn the ship's navigation and data control systems. You'll get your feet wet with the high-tech systems, but also expect some heavy lifting. Now this is the one I'm going to go with because it has plus one hack. I don't know if that's the optimal choice or not, but... That's my reasoning. <clears throat> Your tour of duty aboard the UNN Lucille has concluded. You've spent a productive year. Captain Mayer was pleased with your work, especially with the initiative you showed in physical training. The friendly ensign showed you some back doors into the ship's primary data loop, and you spent your time off pumping good old-fashioned iron. You gained plus one hack and plus one strength. Ah, uh, now to make another choice. Laverne, Florida hosts the Navy's premier tactical training school. While maybe not as respected as the Marines facility at Fort Bush, there's a lot to be learned here. Now when I went through this on my own, this was the one I took. I don't know if that's optimal or not, but it's probably the one I'll take again. The UNN Pierce is ferrying liberated political prisoners back home from their detention near Saturn. The Pierce has been assigned a detachment of Marines, and needs sailors to load, administer, and maintain the arms on board the ship. You know, plus one maintenance. I guess that's different than repair. I don't know. The UNN Carfax is undertaking a mission to examine a newly discovered Class B comet approaching the outer solar system. You'll likely pick up some useful skills working with the high-tech navigation systems aboard this newly commissioned heavy cruiser. And Cyber Affinity, I have no idea what that is. So, yeah, I'm gonna go back with the standard weapons, because at least I know what that is. Laverne, Florida hosts the Navy's premier tactical training school. While maybe not <coughs> as respected as the Marines facility at Fort Bush, there's a lot to be learned here. Tour of duty at the Laverne Tactical Training School has concluded. A year of firing ranges, mock boarding parties, and war games has done you good. You spent plenty of time with military grade pistols, assault rifles, and even auto shotguns. You gained plus two standard weapons. Now, if those are some of the weapons I can expect using standard, I think I'm going to be content. Love assault rifles and auto shotguns, honestly. The Navy strongly encourages every sailor to undertake some amount of zero-G training. A year at the Yamamoto Space Station in Earth's orbit will more than suffice. 
plus two agility. The Navy maintains a survival training school on the surface of Io, the third moon of Jupiter. Pros, there's no better way to improve stamina and survival skills. Cons, the 21.2% mortality rate. Plus two endurance. The Navy's Mary Curie Research Facility on Aquinas IV is currently conducting research on a new strain of space-borne virus that killed 220,000 citizens of New Atlanta. To lift the quarantine, we must determine how the virus pierced the city's micro-nanite shielding. And plus one research. Again, I don't know what research actually does. And again, I don't know what the others do either, but just from their names, you have an idea. I think. So I'm gonna go with endurance. The Navy maintains a survival training school on the surface of Io, the third moon of Jupiter. Pros? There's no better way to improve stamina and survival skills. <coughs> your tour of duty at the IO Survival Training Facility has concluded. You managed to survive your year there, barely. The encounter with a descendant of a Citadel Station Tiger Mutant put you in a disc bay for a month. You've learned to respect the wonders of biogenetics and have trained your body to excellent physical condition. You've gained plus two endurance. See, that sounds kind of what I expected it to be. So, I guess if I took the research, it might give a hint as to what that is, but... Whatever. Uh oh. Getting reassigned. My application to join. I didn't apply. <laughs> Soldier, this is Dr. Janice Polito of the computer op staff of the Von Braun. You're safe for the time being. You're recovering from the effects of surgery and will be unable to remember any of the events of the last few weeks. You're on board the starship Von Braun and something's gone very, very wrong. Some kind of force has hijacked this ship. That's why you volunteered to be implanted with some experimental cybernetic implants. Rely on your cyber interface. It just might save your life. You must find an elevator and come up to Deck 4 to meet me. Deck 4. Can you remember that? But keep your eyes open. They're after us both now. Now, if I don't remember the events of the past few weeks, how can I be sure that I volunteered to be implanted with cybernetics? Maybe this question will be answered, I have no idea. But either way, this is as far as I made it in my first test playthrough. And I think this is where I'm going to end it, for now. So the next time we start, we will get into the truly blind territory where I have no idea what to expect. And until then, this is Mink saying, Auf Wiedersehen.
Zine, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Bye.